Hey, welcome to our lecture online and here's our second example of a parallel and series circuit. Here we're going to simplify the problem a little bit. We're simply going to take the, the circuit and find its equivalent resistance and then find the total current, I total. So we're not going to find the current in each individual branch. If you want to know how to do that, you go to the previous video. But here we have a circuit and notice that we have two resistors that are in series and the way we can know that they're in series is because any current coming from the battery going to the circuit has to go through this resistor and must go to this resistor in order to get back to the battery. But when we get to this branch right here, the current can either go in the top branch, the middle branch, or the bottom branch. It has a choice. So whenever there's a choice for the current, there's multiple branches to get to the same point, then those components are in parallel. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to combine these two together because they're in series. We're going to combine those, two to, those three together because they're in parallel. And now we'll get an equivalent circuit, an intermediate stage where we have a single. So here's our battery. We'll have a single resistor right here representing the equivalent of these two combined. So let's call this, oh, I didn't label them yet. So let's call this R1. Let's call this R2. Let's call this R3. R4 and R5. So when I combine R1 and R2, we'll get, let's say, a resistor called R6. It'll be the equivalent resistance of combining R1 and R2 together. And then we'll have another equivalent resistor. Let's call this one R7, which is the equivalent resistance of these three resistors combined. And back to the battery. Now the question is, how do we find that equivalent resistance? Well, if they're in series, we simply have to add them. So in this case, R6 is simply the sum of R1 plus R2. And so that would be equal to 20 plus 40, which is a, equal to 60 ohms. So this equivalent resistance is equal to 60 ohms, which is simply the sum of those two resistors combined. Now to find the equivalent resistance of this resistor right here, of these three combined, since they are in parallel, we use the parallel equation, so 1 over R equivalent. And since I called our equivalent R7, I might as well call it R7, 1 over R7. The resultant res resistor is equal to 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4 plus 1 over R5. Now, Quite often students will make a mistake here, they'll write R7 is equal to this. So instead of writing 1 over R7, they write R7. No, no, it's 1 over R7, and when you get the result of this, then you have to take the inverse to get R7. We'll see in just a moment what we mean with that. So this is equal to 1 over 20, plus 1 over 50, plus 1 over 50.7. I think I chose the value so the numbers come out nice. So let's find out, let's figure out what that is equal to. So 1 divided by 20 plus 1 divided by 50 plus 1 divided by 50.7. So we have 1 over R7. 1 over R7 is equal to 0 0.08972. And so then to find out what the value is for R7, we take the inverse of that. So we take R7 is equal to the inverse of that. Let's see what that is equal to. I didn't pick very good values. I must have, well, it doesn't matter now. We'll get what we get. So we get 11.15. 11.15 ohms would be the equivalent resistance of these three in parallel. We'll put that over here. So this is equal to 11.15. Maybe I meant that to be 507 instead of 50.7. But again, it doesn't matter. So now we have these two resistors. Now we want to draw the equivalent circuit with just one resistor that will now represent the entire circuit. So all five resistors will now be equivalent to this one resistor right here. And now we need to combine these two since these two are in series. Let's call this the equivalent resistor. And to find the value of the equivalent resistor, we simply have to add these two together. So R equivalent, since they're in series, is equal to R6 plus R7, which is equal to 60 ohms plus 11.15 ohms, so it's equal to 71.15 ohms. Okay, so 71.15 ohms. I guess I don't really need to keep the 0.15, but there it is. I'll just call it 71 ohms. That's the equivalent resistance. Now, since we know the, the uh, voltage across the battery, 100 volts across the battery, so now to find the current, the total current in the circuit, I total, we use Ohm's law. 
And Ohm's law says that I total is equal to V total divided by R equivalent, the total equivalent resistance of the circuit. So we have a battery of 100 volts and equivalent resistance of 71.15 ohms. And so 100 divided by that, so 100 divided by 71.15 equals, and we get 1.4 amps. We just leave it like that. There we go. Get rid of this equal sign. Up. All right. And that's how we do that. Again, the whole idea is to find, to take a, a circuit with a bunch of resistors and reduce the resistors to the simplest form that we can, which is what we call the equivalent resistance. And usually it's a single resistor that represents the entire circuit of resistors. And therefore, we call it the equivalent resistance. And that's how we then find the total current. Once we have that, we take Ohm's law in order to find the total current in the circuit. And that's how we do that.